I think this is very nice indeed. Right, we'll make a start. We'll make a start. We're about a, a minute uh, ahead of schedule, but I'll just go through my spiel, if that's all right. Thank you, guys. I can see there's a few of you have made it in already. Um, I appreciate you making the effort. I know people say that all the time, right? I appreciate you doing this and I appreciate you doing that. I genuinely do appreciate you making the effort because for me, this whole thing is new and I'm trying out webinars as a thing. And, you know, anybody bothering to show up is just great. Really much appreciated. Just to say um, at the top of the chat is a Q&A box or Q&A tab, it just says Q&A in gray. And if you want to actually post a question, you know, a specific question, as opposed to just having a bit of a natter, please, please put it into that Q&A bit, because then I'll flag it up and, and maybe, you know, interrupt a window or something like that. But if you've got no questions, obviously, that's fine as well. Hopefully, you can see the chat box and the, the Q&A thing. There is about an hour of this, I think. If it ends earlier, great. If we If we go on a little bit longer, I hope that's all right as well. Um, I've just clicked the record button, so there should be a recording of all of this when it's all finished. Also, I found this funky little button, and I want to know if it does anything. If I click that and that, do you guys see a like a thing, like a pop-up modal box mm -hmm. saying WP Ultimo and blah, 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 get 30% off because Arindo is great? Did anybody see that? Oh, good. Okay. Well, I'll click that at the end. Needless to say, I'll just show you one more time very quickly. Um, <laughs> Arindo has been very kind, and for a week, he's giving us 30% uh, off, and it's a great offer. It's 30% off a lifetime product, which at the moment, the base product is $69. And by my calculation, that takes you down to 48.30. I don't know what his platform will calculate it at, but, you know, it's pretty, pretty generous. Um, but there we go. That's me. Enough talking from me. I'm Nathan. I'm going to hand over to Arindo. Hi, Arindo. How are you doing? Hi, Nathan. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, thanks for having me. You are. You're more than welcome. The, we, the, the way we're going to work this is, yeah, hello. The way <laughs> we're going to work this is just to let Arindo talk um, for mm. let's, as long as he needs to talk. And then if we've got a, a, an urgent question, we can drop it in. I might interrupt him. Uh, now and again um but apart from that i'm just going to let him roll into action and introduce you to his awesome i don't use that word lightly advisedly awesome <laughs> plugin wp ultimo so over to you arindo i'm going to switch my screen off and and whatnot and hand it over to you okay sure so uh thank you guys for being here and taking the time to basically watch me use a WordPress site for an hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, my name is Arindo Duque. Uh, I am Brazilian and I'm the creator of WP Ultimo, which is a multi-site plugin that basically takes your normal multi-site installation and transforms it into something like WordPress.com or Wix.com. So you would be able to replicate their business model where clients come to you and pay you a monthly fee to have a site on your network. So for today, what I have here um, is a normal WordPress multi-site installation. I don't even have uh, WP Ultimo activated yet, so we can go through the, the whole activation process. So, okay, let's log in. I'm going to use my very secure password. <laughs> oh, yeah, five digit password. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and no, I don't want to stall Gutenberg. Thank you. Uh, okay, so here we are in the the WP admin dashboard. So if we move to the network admin and then plugins, you see that I only have one plugin here and it is WP Ultimo. 
And I'm going to click the network activate. So uh, just so I get this question a lot on the support channels as a pre-sales question. People ask a lot if they can activate WP Ultimo, uh, if it needs to be network active to work. And yes, it's a network only plugin, so yep. you need to activate it on the network admin. So, okay. If we click in the network activate button. It's important to whistle whilst plugins do that. I do that as well. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to do that all oh, the time. <laughs> so, uh, when you first activate the plugin, you are going to be redirected to uh, the setup wizard. So the idea here is that we want to help you get off the ground as soon as possible. So we are going to walk you through some settings. Uh, it's the minimal set of settings that you need to have a functional, net a functional network. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing we'll see is the, the general settings. This is the same thing you're going to see on the plugin options later, but uh, we can do some stuff here already. So we do want people to be able to, to create accounts. Um, we do want uh, people to be able to map their domains. We are going to go through that. It's a, it's a controversial topic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to activate uh, just the manual uh, gateway for now, and I'm not sure if um, if I want to try a period. I'm just leaving leave it as zero days, and we're well, going to sorry, use. Sorry, what, what, what trial period then? Let's say you put three in there. Would they get three days of free service? Yes, okay. and, and that's the global setting. You can override that setting on a plan per plan basis, so you can right. offer different trial periods for different plans. Okay. So currency, yes, US dollars, um, currency position, decimal, a bunch of accounting stuff, boring stuff. Here on the limits and quotas, we can select which uh, limits we want to display on the user dashboard that will become clear in the future when we create a, a, a demo account as a client. And we don't want to remove data on the uninstall process. So let's hit save and continue. Okay, so uh, in the previous uh, step, we decided that we want uh, to allow our users to use uh, custom domains. We want them to be able to map their own domains to uh, their sites on our network. So now Ultimo is going to help you set that up because it does require a bit of extra setup. So if we click the check configuration here, you see that right now uh, my setup is not, uh, there's a bunch of things I need to do in order to get the main map into work. So if I go back, just re refresh. So there's two steps here. First, we need to copy uh, the sunrise.php file. Inside your WP Ultimo plugin folder, there's a file called Sunrise, and we need to copy that file to the WP content folder. Uh, we offer uh, an option, uh, a handy button here that does that automatically for you if you uh, your server has the right uh, permissions. So if you click that button, okay, so we have that file uh, copied copy it for us. And now the second step is that we need to add this line, the define sunrise through to our WP config file. So I have my WP config file here and the line is here, comment it out. So as you can see, I'm just adding 
that line here. Yep. I'm going yep. to save that. Okay, so if we click the shack configuration again, we are going okay on both requirements. And there's a, a small note on hosting support here because the thing is when I, th I think we can we can talk about that later when we discuss. Yeah, that's acting. probably a good idea. It's a bit of a rabbit hole to go down, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on. Continue. Okay. So uh, it's it it might be a bit more complicated to start from scratch when you're doing your network. So we offer the option to import some def default content. So we have uh, three plans, uh, basic, medium, and premium, and a template, say, a, a template site that is something that we will discuss in the future as well, but it's basically a, a site in the network that you can use as a template. So when your clients create a new account, they are not going to default a new, new WordPress site, but a, a duplicate version of the template site. So mm -hmm. if we hit continue on that, WP Ultimo will create the template say, site and create the plans for us. Okay, so now the logo. Uh, you can change your logo here already. This is going to, to appear on the registration page and the login page. Uh, not going to do that here, but it's your normal uh, upload yeah, yeah. dialog window. So save and continue. There's a few notes on support and we are ready. So if we go to the dashboard now. That probably took you about five minutes whilst talking us all through it. Re realistically, that takes about one minute, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we have a bunch of other stuff here. Uh, we have a WP Ultimo menu with a bunch of options. The subscription menu where we will we uh, will manage all the subscriptions on our site, uh, the plans and coupons. And we also have a summary here that show, uh, show some stats about your network. Mm -hmm. So yeah, should we go to the plans? We've got one question. Let me just have a look. Um, okay. da, da, da. Oh, um, so just very quickly, it's not, Mark, all he's done so far is just install WP Ultimo. If you've got any familiarity whatsoever with um, WordPress, what he's covered thus far, you'll be able to do all by yourself uh, without any problem. So, no, keep going, Arindo, I think. Go to the settings, yeah. Okay. So sh should we go straight to the settings or you it's think... Up to you, sorry, whatever you have planned. Mm, okay. So I think I'll... Yeah, let's go to the settings. <laughs> okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so here we are in the main settings page. Uh, we have here in, in the general tab, it's pretty much the same thing we saw during the, the setup wizard. So I think we can move past that. Yep. Things get, uh, start to get really interesting here on the network settings. So, okay, and bear with me, guys, because there's a lot of options here. So, no, it's uh, good. I was, I was thinking, just so that everybody knows, I specifically told Arindo to, to nerd out on the settings because I think in many ways that's what I always like to see. I, I want to see what I'm buying, and this is what you'd buy. So, yeah, go for it, Arindo. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the first option we, we see here is the block front end, front end access. Uh, by default, once a subscription is not active anymore, so for example, if the trial is over or if the, a, a monthly payment uh, failed to complete, uh, that user subscription is going to be marked as not active. 
And by default, his site will continue to be accessible by, by users in general. If you don't want that to happen, you can just click the block front end access. And as you can see, when you activate that option, you can also add a grace period. So uh, you can set, for example, a number of days, for example, nice. three days here. And uh, after the subscription becomes uh, inactive, the site will still be available for that amount of days, and then it will be blocked. That's cool. I didn't know it had that grace period because I've never ticked that box, but that's good to know. <laughs> okay, so the second option is to enable multiple sites per user. Uh, it's also uh, selected, enabled by default. Uh, basically, you can there's you can allow your users to create as many sites as they want, and you can add a site limit on each of your plans. So you can have, for example, a basic plan with just one site and a premium plan with unlimited sites. But in order to allow that, you need to have these options selected. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, the user will only be able to create one site per account. Uh, the next one is uh, the option to enable visits limitation and counting because uh, you can also set a visit limits on each of our plans. So you can have, for example, 20,000 visits per month mm. in a given site. And in order to count those visits, we need to add a uh, Ajax call to the front end, and that can, be, that can have a, a bit of an impact on performance overall. So if you're not going to limit visits, uh, you, you can just take this, bo this box out and we will not like add that piece of Ajax script. So, yeah. I think that's quite good though, because the, there's a lot of conversation around the hosting, which we'll get to later and, and the cost, if you've got a successful network ramping up. So the ability to limit the um, number of pages visited could be directly proportional to what your hosting company, what their pricing structure is. So, you yeah. know, a hundred thousand page views, you're going to charge them more if they hop over that and so on. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So next we have the pricing options. Uh, currently we offer three types of, of pricing period of billing period. You can have uh, monthly pricing, uh, quarterly pricing, and yearly pricing. And if you disable or enable any of those options, uh, for example, you, you can, maybe you want your users just to be able to use, to create accounts for a year long contract period. So to do that, you would, uh, only enable the the yearly pricing option, mm -hmm. and you can have all of those selected. And for example, set the yearly as the default, so you can yep. control that. Yeah. Uh, next, we have the sign up and login options. Uh, here, you can enable or disable registration. Uh, we want. Uh, our users to be able to rest to create new accounts but if you're for example like doing some maintenance or upgrading something and you want to close registration for a certain period of time you can just tick this box yeah, good thought yeah uh we also offer a rewrite option so by default if a user wants to create an account, and I can display that for you here. Are you guys seeing the incognito yeah. window? Yeah. So if we go to login here uh, and register, uh, you guys are going to see that it uses the default WordPress URL, mm -hmm. the WP signup.php. Uh, maybe that's something you don't want to, so you can use this 
to change that to something more like white label, like register, for example. And you can do the same for login. So I'm going to use that here. And some people uh, would really like to hide the fact that they are using WordPress altogether. So we all offer this option to obfuscate the original login URL because if you just change the URL here to login, for example, if your uh, if your client tries to access the wp-login.php, he would still be able to log in. Like WP Ultimo would redirect to him to the login page, the new login page, but that's a clue that the, the site is running on WordPress. So if you want the, your users to get a 404 error, when accessing the wp-login.php page, you can just fix this option. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's useful if you want to hide the fact, the fact that- I like that, that's good, I like it, yeah. Uh, so we also have an option to auto-login users after the registration period uh, process. So it, uh, as soon as the, the registration is over, your user will be logged in automatically and redirected to the their dashboard. Mm -hmm. You can also set a, a default user role that will be assigned to the user. So we, we use uh, the administrator role by default. And this is one of the settings that you can actually override on a plan per plan basis. So for example, you can have a basic plan where the user, your client will get uh, an editor pro, for example, and a premium plan where he'll get uh, an admin role. Hmm. Uh, this here is not useful most of the time, but it's good to have as an option. Uh, a lot of people have just one plan available. And in that case, it's, it, it, it doesn't really make sense to display the pricing table at all or a plan selection step like we have here. Yeah. So in those cases, you can just tick this box and the registration process would start directly on the next step. Okay, so you can also limit registration by country. So if you are in the UK and you don't want people from other other countries to sign up, you can just enter the UK there and registration will be locked up for users from other countries. We don't want that. No. Most <laughs> <laughs> people don't want that. Um, we can also, uh, this is an interesting use case as well, but you can also uh, allow people to select different domains that you own. And for example, uh, a good example would be if you are serving different niches on the same network. So you have, for example, a, a mychurch.com domain and say like my, I don't know, my the car. <laughs> yes, yes, sure. And you can have your users uh, pick those domains during the signup process and their site will be created using that domain. So uh, here on my, my demo site, we are using multi-site on subdirectory mode. Uh, so the sites will look like if we allow them to use, for example, myfitness.com, their site would be myfitness.mysite, for example. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, you have also different options for coupon codes. You can enable them via, via the URL, so you can have a registration URL with the coupon code on it, and WP Ultimo would pick up that automatically. Okay. Um, you can have coupon codes only via URL, or you can have via URL or and the 
the coupon code view during sign up. And you can, of course, disable coupon codes entirely. Right. Uh, next up, you have the terms of service. So if you want to display a bunch of legal stuff here, legal stuff. <laughs> That's more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> and you have, uh, you need your users to click the, the I accept the terms of service. Um, WP Ultimo would add that automatically for you. So Where does that that's, go on the registration process? Is that at the point of? It appears um, on the last step, so last step, right, right before the account is created. Okay. Um, okay, so now to site templates. There's quite a few options here as well. So the before we dive in uh, on the options, we have to understand what a site template is. Uh, it's basically a normal site on your multi-site network that is not attached to any subscription. And you can go there and change the active theme and customize the template site uh, as much as you want and add um, pages and, and posts and all of that stuff. And then you can attach, attach those templates, those site templates to plans, or if you want something more powerful, you can allow your users to select those templates during the sign-up flow. So that's what is selected by default. We can, of course, disable that, uh, but we want that. It's very and... powerful, that. It's hard to express. When you tick that box, it seems you know, so trivial, but you can basically set up something <laughs> super amazing with, with that, can't you? You know, kind of an entire website and they just import it and it's done for them with all the pages configured and what have you. Yep. And and as you you saw during the the setup use, uh, wizard, uh, we actually have a template site yeah. now because mm -hmm. it was created for us. So mm -hmm. we added that later. Okay, so there's an option to allow template switching because of course, if the user selects a template, uh, he might change his mind later and wants to use a different template. So you can allow them to do that. Uh, the, the downside here is that the data is lost. So if the client made any modifications at all on the the, the their site after mm -hmm. using the original template. Okay. Uh, that would be erased to load uh, the new template. Okay. That's why we we give the option to allow them to do that or not. Um, this is a new feature actually from one point eight. And it is the option to allow users to use their own site as templates. So uh, let's, for example, if your client have a lot of, I don't know, fitness studios all around the country, mm -hmm. and he wants a different site for every, every one of them, uh, he would be able to create just one site and then use his own site as a template and just make the minor modifications that he would need. Okay, is that is that like a, a WordPress import export then? No, it's the it's the same process of site duplication that we mm -hmm. use on the, the 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 registration process. Okay, it's just that during the the template selection, uh, a bunch of new options will appear, and those options are your sites. Okay. Sophie just asked a question. Thank you, Sophie. She says, what happens if you amend a template after it's been selected and presumably is in use by somebody at this at already? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the changes do not propagate down to sites that were already created. Uh, it's a pretty tough problem to solve. I, I I have tried to do that a few times and I failed miserably <laughs> in all of them. But yeah, it's 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 a problem. Uh, Actually, have... to be honest, I think that's 
I would rather it that way because I think the site, you know, that they've got their site and that's what their site looks like. And if there were sudden unexpected changes, that would trouble me as a site owner, if you know what I mean. So that yeah. seems like a sensible default. I can see exactly why you might want to push an update, though. I can see both sides of it, but for me, I would rather the way it is now. But yeah, yeah. From a from a, a technical standpoint, I don't think it's something uh, feasible in a reasonable manner. Okay, but, I yeah. hope that answers your question, though, Sophie. So essentially, if you've got if you make updates, it's not going to affect sites that you've already got. Um, My advice would be to spend a lot of time on the templates. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, get it right. And make sure, yeah, <laughs> the first time. Yeah. But yeah, so, um, okay. So you can also allow template filtering. This will add a, a filtering bar at the top because as we will see in the future, you can add different categories to each of the templates and users would be able to filter using them. And this one here uh, is just something to make the whole process a bit prettier. It, 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 instead of, because once you have the, the, the template selection step during the registration process, you have a button that allows you to view the template. Uh, on our older versions, when you click that button, we would open the the template site on a different yeah. tab. Yeah. And it's just not cool. So <laughs> this, <laughs> this adds a, a top bar and you can have a, a responsive a button so you can test how the template say, site would look on mobile, on tablets, and you can switch the templates there. It's it's pretty cool. So it's like a horizontal bar right at the top of the page, and they can use a drop down menu to go mobile to go whatever. Um, yes, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, good. And here we have the allowed templates. So right now we have just one template. And it's not selected, so the the template selection step will not even show up because there's no template to select from. So we're going to add that template site. Okay. Uh, next up is the enable screenshot scraper. This is a feature that I, I'm not sure if a lot of people use, but if you tick this box, you uh, I, I think we, we need to save this real quick and go to yeah, the, go and have a look. Yeah, let's do it. Just so you guys have a better reference. Okay, so settings are saved. If we switch here and refresh the page, you see that we have a new step down here, template selection. Yep. So let's select a plan just for demonstration purposes. And here we are. So this is yes. the template selection page. And as you see, <laughs> yeah. So what that option, the, the screenshot scraper does is that it goes and access your template site for you, takes a picture, saves it, and that picture would appear here. So okay. it does that automatically for you. So you don't would it take to... the top portion of the home page? Would it just look yes, at that? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, it uses a very obscure, obscure uh, Google API, so it won't work here because I'm I'm on oh, my local know. site. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, unfortunately, it's not something I'll be able to. Show to you guys. You can, of course, make your own image and upload that with yes. WordPress recommended defaults. Yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, we actually we also offer an option to copy the media on the template say, site for your client sites. Um, this is useful for uh the the use case that led me to implement this was that a user had a bunch of 
cool stock images, but uh, the license for those images uh, were for like single site use. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was lots wanted, of single sites. <laughs> yeah. So he wanted the 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 pretty images to appear on the template sites, but yeah. Once the user uh, create an account, um, the those images would not be copied over. So got it. And of course, we have an option to prevent search engines from uh, indexing site templates. I think that's it's probably a good idea. I'm yeah. not really uh, a a CEO uh, SEO expert expert guy, so I'm not sure. But it's it's not selected by default. But I would recommend that you select that. It's good not to have it by default. I don't know how many people have released site, sites over to clients and forgot to untick that box. Raise <laughs> your hand. <laughs> I <Yes>. know. <laughs> so, uh, just so you guys have an idea of the the where are you the template selection topic bar here. Yep. Got it. We, if we go to the view template. So it's it's basically this here. And it's quite slow, actually. I'm not sure why. It's okay. It's really okay. It's fine. Here is the, the template side. And you can, of course, if you have a bunch of different templates. You can have little previews of them here, mm-hmm. and you can see how they work on mobile and stuff like that. And if you want to use that template and you click the use that button, it selects it for you and goes to the next step. step. Three. Yep. It's uh, beautiful, Arindo. This is, it, it looks <laughs> utterly, utterly brilliant. You know, it's really professional. I'm, I'm loving all of this. Keep going. Okay, so next up, we have the upgrade and downgrade options. So naturally, if you offer different plans uh, with different limitations, uh, your users will be uh, doing upgrades and downgrades. And there's a few few actions that you might want to take when a, a downgrade happens. So let's suppose you have one user on your premium plan that allows them to post, um, I don't know, to have like 15 pages. And you have a basic plan that allows for five pages. And that users that user downgrades from the premium to the basic. So now, if you do nothing, your client will be paying the basic monthly fee, but have the same limitation as the, the premium with the 15 pages. Yep. So what you can do is you can allow that for happen, uh, but that sort of create a loophole in your business strategy yep. because the guy can just sign up for your highest plan and build the entire site and then downgrade to the lowest plan. So you can either move the posts above the new quota to the trash, or you can move the post about the new quota to and mark them as drafts. So in this case, uh, for example, uh, WP Ultimo would pick the last 10, pa- 10 pages. Yep. And either move, either send them to trash or move the, and mark them as drafts. So the user is not necessarily losing the content, but that content is no longer available on the front end. Can they manually go in and publish those from draft to published manually? And only if the, the limitation is yeah. not reached. Okay. So if they, they, they are in the same plan and they try to publish those pages, they will get a limitation okay. uh, message. Yeah. Yeah. And sorry, just the order of that was it, will it take the oldest content or the newest content? The newest um, content. And it, it does some, interesting. and it does some filtering to 
uh, for example, the user can have a page set as the home page. Yep. So if that's the case, uh, Ultimo skips that page and do not include that on the. Okay. Uh, so just so you don't break your client site. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good idea. Uh, we have the same thing for sites. So, for example, we can have a premium plan with, which allows for five sites and a basic plan which allows for only one. And it's the same loophole. If, if you do nothing, the, the client can go uh, for the higher plan, create five sites, and then downgrade and pay less and still have the five sites. So what you can do here is that you, once the, the user downgrades, you can block the front end access only of the sites above the yeah. coder. Yeah. You can block only the back end or you can block both. So if you really want the user to <laughs> pay you again for the higher plan, <laughs> you can just block every, every other site. And the site, it keeps, if it, it, for example, it only allows for one site, is the site that the user selects as the, the primary site. Okay. So here we have uh, some advanced stuff. Uh, we have a search and replace a functionality that only runs during the duplication process. So you can fill up your template sites with uh, place road, placeholders. Yes. And, oh, that's, yeah, I hadn't thought of it like that. That's such a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And WP Ultimo will replace that, those for you. So you, for example, you, you have a Google Maps widget somewhere in the home page of the template say, site. You can enter a placehold for the address there and capture that address from the user some, somewhere and display it. Uh, and when the duplication process is over, WP Ultimo will replace the place the placeholder with the real address, and Google Maps will work automatically. Uh, the thing is, this here doesn't really do much because there's no dynamic options here. So, mm -hmm. um, if you really want to use the power of search and replace right now, you would need to. Yeah. Add a bit of custom code is not difficult, and we have a whole knowledge page explaining how to do it. There's a few topics about it on the forums as well. So if you guys have any questions about that, you can always post on the forums, and people will help you figure it out. Um, okay, and finally, we have two options here. There are just overrides of WordPress defaults. So by default, WordPress multi-site uh, do not allow uh, subsites to have a, a plugins page. You can change that here on settings in network settings, mm -hmm. but why not have that here as well? Yeah, so, nice. Uh, if you tick that box and, and the same is valid for the add new users, by default, uh, WordPress will not display that option. So if mm -hmm. you, if you plan to allow your users, your clients to invite new users, there's uh, it's a good idea to enable this option as well. So let's save it. Just whilst you're saving that, Sophie's asked an additional question. She says, <laughs> can you allow template switching on a per account basis? I'm trying to unpick that in my head. Um, mm, no, right now it's a global setting. So if okay. you allow it, Template switching, all plans will have access to that functionality. Okay, there we go. Thank you. But but it is a good idea. Yeah. Maybe something to consider. Okay, so I'm not sure. Should we continue to move through the tabs? Yeah, should, should, we, we... should we just skip? I mean, we can come back to domain mapping maybe at the end. Payment gateways. Is it safe to say at the moment it's manual payment, i.e. something through the mail, um, or it's PayPal and, Stri and Stripe, which everybody's got access to? Um, okay, so maybe let's just take a quick look there. Yeah. 
So here we have the, the payment gateway options. Uh, this is uh, the title of the, the payment page. You can change that here. And you can also change the copy that is displayed on that page. Uh, you can, of course, send uh, the invoice to the user. WP Ultimo generates a PDF. Uh, it's not really useful for people on Europe because it's not uh, VIT compliance yet. Mm. But yeah, the option is there. <laughs> uh, you can enter your company info here and you can select the active gateways here. So you see that when you select the gateways, it adds additional options for each of the gateways. Uh, I don't have Stripe or PayPal set up here, so I'm just going to use the manual gateway. The manual gateway is simply uh, whenever uh, the billing period is coming to an end, WP Ultimo creates a pending payment and you can enter instructions for your user on how to pay. So you can enter here, for example, bank details mm -hmm. that your user would use to pay. And you can set a, a period of waiting days. So uh, from the moment that the subscription becomes inactive, uh, there's the site will still be available for the amount of days you put here because mm -hmm. The, the assumption here is that you are still waiting for the payment because uh, bank transfers can take a while and things like that. So, mm. yeah, does it send down. out, does it mail them, the client, um, uh, a notification to say, look, you, you yes. please log in? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, great. And, and after you receive the payment, there's an option on the subscription management page that allows you to mark, to mark that payment as received. Yep. And the subscription is automatically renewed once you do that. Some, so let's put here some, some up. and let's leave, leave it as it is. Change, okay. Speaking of emails, I think that was the next tab, wasn't it? Yes, so emails. So you can customize pretty much every single email WP Ultimo sends out. And we even capture some default WordPress emails, emails and, and add them here as well. Okay. Maybe just scroll through that list very slowly and we can just have a look at them. So account created, um, account created invite, account removed, a user account removed, site and, and so. Every every single email that has the the admin flag, yeah, is going to be sent to you, the network admin, mm -hmm. and the rest is going to go to the user. And there's about what is there about twenty of those, something like that. Yes, All right. No, it's way more, isn't it? <laughs> it's like forty. <laughs> Essentially, though, if there's an email coming out, you can amend it here. And yes. If you just click on one of them, Arindo, we can see it's just a, a regular kind of uh, uh, text editor with the title and the enable option. And there's some, um, what are those things called, merge tags that you can yes. put in the email. And you can, of course, disable them as well. So yeah. if, you, if you think that your network is sending out a lot of emails, you can just take them out and they mm -hmm. will not be sent anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, and you can you can select the from and the from name and the from email, and of course you can send them as a plain text email or a HTML template. Yeah, let's leave that as well. And this is just using um, PHP Mailer and WordPress, whatever WordPress is using, it's using that to send. Yes. Out, I guess. So if you have any plugins that handle uh, SMTP for you. Yeah, uh, it will work automatically. Great. So okay. styling next. This is good. I like this page. Styling. Yeah, it's good. So yeah, so here in the styling tab, we have a bunch of different options that you can change here, but. 
I prefer to do that on the customizer because you can see how that affects the, yeah, it's, it's nice. the registration page as you make changes. So let's launch the customizer. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so here we have our sign up process and we have the same options we had there. Mm. So if we change the primary color, for example, for something more like a red, it makes that change here. If we change the accent color, so you can use that to match your brand colors. Um, you can, of course, uh, change the logo yep. uh, here, it's the same process. And uh, we, we offer a few different logo options. So there's the default logo, which is this one you see over here. Um, there you cannot also upload a square version. This is useful for things like the Stripe payment mm. model that yeah. uses it. Um, and you can also have a different logo for the login page. Uh, we offer that option because people sometimes like to customize the login page and add uh, background colors and things like that. And sometimes the same logo uh, do not work as well. Yeah. For yeah. Both the registration page and the login page. So you have the option to use different ones. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's publish that. Bum, bum. Here at the customizer, there's an a few other options as well. You can reorder the, the sign-up steps. So maybe you want the, the template selection to come first. So you can do that here. Not sure why that's appearing. But then the, your users will first select the template and then pick a plan. Yeah, got it. Uh, that's you, a, can that's actually, nice. yeah, like that. you can actually rename the steps as well. So uh, you can have something like tiers and uh, select the site. Yep. Very cool. And as you can see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's totally customizable. <laughs> Uh, and also you can add custom CSS here. So for example, you want to, I don't know, the, that's ah, something that is actually useful. Uh, maybe you want your buttons to have a different background color. Let's put it red, important just to make sure that <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to say even of that. <laughs> so that pretty much covers the customizer options. That's well, a really I... big feature, though. I, I think, you know, the ability to customize it without a great deal of um, expertise in CSS is fantastic, really good. And here at the bottom, you actually have some options for that uh, template selection page we saw before. So if we open that again, mm, what is that? I may have accidentally disabled that option. Let me see. Network settings. So this, the settings you were trying to fiddle with, you carry on, by the way. The, um, the settings that you're trying to fiddle with now uh, enable you to alter and customize the the bar that you saw at the top so that it's part of your um your branding that little bar where you could select um desktop or tablet or what have you yes you can fiddle, fiddle with the columns colors of that so here we that have a, a gray background and we have the option to resize and the boot the button so if we go here um, here, you can, for example, select this base site, and we can disable the resize icons. You can, of course, use a different logo again. 
Yeah. Uh, you can change the colors to match your branding. So if we save that. This is going to look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> lovely red. <laughs> so here. That, uh, so we no longer have the, yeah. the resize icons and yep. the button has a different copy and a different background color. Perfect. Awesome. So next up is the tools. There is not much to see here, I think. Uh, of course, there's an option to enable webhooks. This yep. is a bit more advanced for most users. But webhooks allows uh, WP Ultimo to send messages whenever an event occurs. So uh, let's suppose you have a MailChimp account and you want to add a, a user to a list on MailChimp. Uh, you can use uh, webhooks to do that. And there is a very complete webhook editor here with all the event the events you can use you can create a new webhook and send to a given url and of course you can integrate with Zapier. Uh, in the past you had to do the whole webhook setup by hand right now we have a Zapier app for wp ultimo on Zapier. so if you go to Zapier and you are a Zapier user you would be able to, I can actually show that for you. Oh, I see. So you've got a complete integration with Zapier now. Yes. Oh, so, great. So you, you bet, yeah, you're in their UI. There is a. Yeah, so just so as a, a reference, in the past, you had to go to this whole tutorial. Yeah, to be use webhooks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm not sure why the new link is not here. Let's see Zapier. Directly. So now, if you use the the invitation link, you would be able to see WP Ultimo as is a peer yeah. app, and all the triggers are there. So of course, you can now, whenever a payment fail, you can send a push notification to your smartphone or something like that, yeah. and all the crazy stuff you can do with Zapier. Yeah, it's amazing, amazing what you can do with that. Okay, so yep. Um, here we have some advanced options. Yeah. We now have uh, some a rudimentary API, but it's only used for the Zapier integration right now. Mm -hmm. So there is not much to see here. And we have the jumper, which is one of my favorite <laughs> features of WP Ultimo. But I, I did not know you'd made this. I figured you'd kind of taken an open source project and put it in, but no, you, you actually wrote this, didn't you? This is cool. Yes, and I use it all the time, and, and it, it makes me sad that most people don't use it. So, <laughs> you will after seeing this. So as you can see here on the footer, we have this message saying that you can use command option G to jump between pages, and the G is this option here. You can change that for any other key. Yeah. So if I do that key combo, this is what you see if it works here. So you can type, for example, main site. And if you type enter, uh, WP Ultimo will take you directly to the, to the main site. So let's do that. This, is, this allows you to navigate this, anyway, your site pretty, close, pretty yeah. quickly. So, uh, now I'm on the main site, and maybe I want to come back to the tools, to the tools page we saw. Mm, interesting. So, okay, so I don't have tools here for some up. Let's go to style, for example. Yeah. That's actually a bug. There should <laughs> be a tool. out tools. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you got close. <laughs> yeah. it's the cool thing is that you can add custom custom yes. links as well. So yes. maybe you want your WP Engine dash dashboard here because you use that a lot. So dashboard and then I think you have to leave the space here. WP 
wp-engine.com. And if we save the changes, it's not saving. Okay, I'll save it. Your Grammarly didn't like it. <laughs> so if we get WP Engine dashboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. And yeah. Boom. So, and it's smart enough to see that is it is an external URL. Yes, yeah, I was wondering that. that. Just yeah. And then, on a different then you, um, very clever. That's a great little feature. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now to the advanced, there's not, there's not much to see here. Uh, basically, you have options to, to clean your WP Ultimo installation. Mm -hmm. uh, it says danger zone for a good reason, so be careful. Stay away. <laughs> and the other this is, okay, no, go on. I was just going to say the um, we're sort of getting on for an hour now. Um, if you guys are happy to keep listening, then that's great. Um, what I would do is I'll say that an hour is what we were supposed to do. But Arindo, if you're all right to stick around, we can just keep going. I'll just yeah. pop up this little offer in case anybody's got to go quickly. Um, just now, Arindo's offering um, you guys. 30% off. This code will be um, working for a week. Um, and I don't know if I should have, Arindo, put a code in there. Was it an actual coupon code at the checkout? Or I can't remember what it was. Or did it get automatically applied? Or Yes, it's a, it's a coupon code that you need to, to use during checkout. What was it? I think it was WP Builds Webinar. I'm pretty sure, ninety yeah. percent like sure. <laughs> anyway, if you click on that link, um, um, WP Builds Webinar is the coupon code. I'm just going to check whilst we do it, but basically, click that link, get yourself thirty percent off. And if WP Builds Webinar, all as one word, lowercase, doesn't work, reach out to me, and I'll give you the correct one that does work. That's how highly professional I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, try WP Builds webinar. And with that, I'll take that away. Mm. And if you want me to show that later, I will, so that you can click on that. Link. Yeah, that's right. It's WP Builds webinar, all lowercase and no spaces. Great. I'll put a link in the chat now, actually. Great. To carry on. Okay, so now we are on the export and import tab. This is a new feature of 1.8 as well. Uh, you can export all of your Ultimo settings, and this will create a zip file for you to download, as you can see here. Uh, and then you can just import that same file, and you can either have all the settings imported, or you can do a partial import and just select the things you want Ultimo to load from that file. Okay, so the next step is, there's not much to it, uh, is the support terms again, and you can activate your copy using your license key. Uh, if you do that, you, you'll be notified when a new version is out on your plugins. Uh, page, and you also have an option to join the beta program to have uh, the cutting edge version, which mm -hmm. is usually an alpha on a beta, where we are testing some cool new features. And you can see what's on being tested on the alpha and beta builds on the roadmap. We have a roadmap on Trello that we use to over features and stuff like that. So, oh, Plesk domain mapping. And that's I forgot. I forgot about that. That's good. I'm not sure if that's coming anytime soon. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, Sorry, <it> is. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the go cardless one. That'll suit me down to the ground because I'm a big go cardless user. That's a UK thing. Well, European thing. Yeah, so as you can see right now, we only have the WooCommerce subscription support on beta. So if you have that add-on and you have the beta program enabled, 
you would see that update. Okay, so yeah, I think we covered pretty much all the settings minus the domain mapping, but I think we might want to come back to that after we create a demo account. I'm not sure. Just quickly, David says um, he loves it, very powerful and so on. He's, he's saying from a business point of view, um, what, what are your thoughts about the sort of pricing over time? Because obviously lifetime pricing, especially uh, affordable lifetime pricing, um, is is a difficult business model to keep going. Do you have any plans to alter that plan, that business model? Uh, yes, I do. And I would really uh, recommend that you guys use the coupon codes now because the price <laughs> will not be the same in... Now, my plan is that once 2.0 is out, that we will switch to uh, a subscription model. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it's one of my my main goals right now is to make is to turn this into a sustainable business in the long term. Uh, it's it's so cool to to build this thing that I really want to do that for a really long time. So. It would be interesting if I I managed to transform that into a, a real business. We're starting so, to take off, but there's there's a lot to go. Yeah. Well, there, there you go, David. I think you've got your answer. There is go and buy it now, and it will <laughs> hopefully be sustainable because the, the it's going to become a subscription service uh, instead of a one time fee. Yeah. And the prices are going up as well. Yeah. Or David, you could wait and pay the subscription fee, and that would certainly help towards the sustainability <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of the product. It's an option. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, let's go to the statistics statistic page. There's not much to see here; just a few graphs. Yeah. It's display your MRR, uh, total revenue so far. Your most your plan that is most the most popular one, your user base growth, and it's not much to see here. Here we have the broadcast feature, which I think is really cool. Mm. So uh, there's maybe you are you are going to have a. You the the network is going to be down for a few hours because you're upgrading your server. So you might want to alert your users about that. So you can either target users or you can target plans. So let's add this message to all of the plans on the platform. And you can see like uh, warning. Uh, the network, and as you can see, as I type here, you can see how that message yeah, yeah, yeah. will appear. Yep. Uh, the network will be down tomorrow. And if you click send, uh, it should add that to the broadcast. So you can see the message and can see the targets here and the date and you can also, of course delete the message can the um can the users dismiss that or do you, do that, does it have to be deleted no. by you no yes the user can dismiss it and okay. it's a, a permanent dismissal Good. so yeah and of course you can also send uh use the same broadcast platform to send emails so okay there we go yeah let's see it this is we have no users now, so maybe I'll send an email to myself. Not sure. Okay, so email. The network will be down. And if I send that, let me check if we have uh, email capture going on. I think you do somewhere. Have you got it? Yeah, mail hog. Should grab it. This is going to open on Opera, and I don't want that to happen. Let me see if I <laughs> manage to. It, we'll believe you though if you <laughs> if you want to take it on trust. 
and okay. email will be generated. Yeah, and um, it uses the same uh, uh, HTML template that the other emails use yeah. as well. So, okay. yep. Um, yep. So, okay. Here is is the web hooks. We already saw that. We have an add-ons page here. Mm. Oh, interesting. Hello. It's okay. It, it can be <laughs> just, there's a whole bunch of add-ons, isn't there? There's. Um, yes, I'm got... using a, a, an app called uh, Trip Mode. It blocks ah, yes. In, yes. access it blocks. to pretty much. Oh, the Skype shouldn't be here. Uh, so that's uh, probably the reason this is not working. But yeah, no, it, it certainly it's worked for me this morning. Put it that way. So. Uh, we have an about page. There's not much to see here as well. And we have, uh, so there's some uh, links here just to help you. And the change log here, but as you can see, we have no network, so the change log was not loaded. So. Uh, you want to flip into the subscription plan bits, and we'll just we'll probably have to go like breakneck speed. Okay. Um, so just, should we go the... to plans before or yeah, that's sure, that's a good idea? We can just get an idea of what's possible, and this is for the this is all about the clients now, and not so much about the the sort of yes. back end, I suppose. Yeah. So here we have our plans that the setup wizard created for us. You can see uh, the prices for each of the billing options. Uh, you can see if the plans have a setup fee uh, attached to them or not, the number of customers in each of those plans, and if they allow domain mapping or not. Uh, you can actually uh, reorder the plans as well. This will affect the way they appear on the pricing tables. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can, you there's this trend now that the most expensive plan appears before the others and you don't need to save it every time you drop uh, the new order to save it, save, save it automatically. Uh, so let's edit the medium plan. So here we are. Uh, you can also, of course, give your plan a title, add a brief description. This description is used on the pricing tables as well. So if we close this and we go to the register page again, you'll see that the order was changed and that the description is here and the title is here. So let's change that to, I don't know, pro. And of course you can have different prices. There's the monthly price, the quarterly price and the yearly price. Mm -hmm. And you can mark this as a free plan as well. Let's add a setup fee of 30 US dollars. Uh, here you can enable uh, custom domains. This is the ability that you users will have of adding their own domains to, to the site. You can have a custom trial period for each of the plans. So let's see, you want this particular plan to have a three day trial period and you can change the default role. You can also limit the templates available for each of the plans. So maybe you want some templates just for your higher tier plans and not for the basic ones. Uh, and here is the uh, a over, uh, override option for the copy media. So you can actually set that on a plan per plan basis mm -hmm. as well. So next step is the quotas, uh, limits and quotas. You can limit the number of posts, pages, and media uploads your clients will be able to do on this plan. And you can disable posts altogether if you want to or pages mm -hmm. or media uploads. Uh, you can change the disk space available for each of the, your client sites. So let's put here 200 megabytes. 
Uh, is that the um, is that the space inside the media library, or does that include um, the f files that make up WordPress as well? No, just just the media li library. Okay, great. Uh, you can allow your your users to invite new plans and limit that number of users. Invite new users. Oh, sorry, and you can limit change the site count limits and the visit count limits. Let's see, let's put here 200, 20, 20,000 visits per month. Okay, let's, oh, let, let's move on and then we save at the end. Uh, you can select which options appear on the pricing tables. So if we move over there, we we'll yep. see that this here, mm -hmm. you can disable the, the ones you don't want to show up. And you can, of course, add your own. So VIP support. And this actually takes uh, the formatting as well. And you can add one per line. So I don't oh, know. Okay. Coffee for free. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> uh, and here, oh, shoot. We don't have extra plugins, but you can, no, also but you can allow them there. <laughs> yes. And the allow things as well. So you can select which things and plugins users on this plane will have access to. Yeah. Uh, there's also an option here on the side to mark the, this plan as hidden. This is useful if you are doing, for example, a promotion uh, or or something like that, where your users will get a, a different deal, but you don't want that that plan to show up on the sign up page for regular users. And but then, how would you share that plan if it's hidden? If you look over here, there's a, a shareable link. If you click this button, it copies the link to the to the uh, uh, copy clipboard. And if you yeah. if you pass it here, you see that it skips the the plan selection and it goes straight to the next step. So it automatically selects the plan for you. Okay, so, that's cool. So let's save that up. And if we move back there again. You see the that free coffee. there it is, free coffee. coffee for free, <laughs> and the setup fee is here. The new yeah. name is here. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it for plans. Um, okay, coupons. There's not much to see here as well, but you can create uh, coupon codes. Mm -hmm. And let's see a, a test coupon code. I added a bunch of. Two tips. I regret it now. <laughs> uh, and you can, there's two types of coupon codes. You can either give um, absolute value, like $5, yeah. or you can have a percentage value, 5% uh, in this case. You can set a expiring date, so you can have that work for only a, a week, for example. Uh, you can have that only for the two or three first billing cycles, so it will work only for the first two payments in this case, and you can limit the number of users, so only the first 100 people to use this coupon code will be able to redeem that that offer. When, when they redeem that coupon, um, will the, like for example, the billing cycles, will that be in some way presented to them um, as this is... I don't know, t two months, 50% off. And after that, you will be billed your normal $10 yes. instead. Yeah. It appears on the, the accounts page. Okay. And since we have the coupons on the URL, we have the same thing here where we can, you can copy the, the link to have the coupon already on the link. So if you have, and then uh, WP Ultimo will fill that field for you automatically. So, yeah, I think it's time for us to create an account because otherwise we won't be able to see anything on the subscription. Thanks. Sounds good to me. Okay, so let's go. And let's get 
our let's get a plan that doesn't have a trial because we want to to the the payment page to appear right away so we guess one we want the premium ah let's do something really quickly before so the template page the template site is a default wordpress site so it will have our beloved hello world <laughs> yeah. we all love hello wp builds Yay. let's update that just so we can be sure that the we are not getting the default site but yeah. actually a, a copy of the template so test test the title of the test uh so you can see we display a preview of the url here if mm -hmm. your network is using subdomains it would appear test.wpbuilds.local do you have any thoughts on that? Do you have any preferred way of doing it? Do you go for subdomains or? or... Mm, it's an it's an interesting question. For, uh, it's a lot easier to get SSL and things like that to work with subdirectory. Yes. <laughs> it, it doesn't look as professional as subdomains, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. So test test at test.dev, secure password, secure password. Here we have, here for example, we would be able to enter our coupon code. If uh, the coupon code was in the URL, that field would be uh, already also populated. Yeah. yeah. And we need to, here's our terms of service, legal stuff. Oh, there it was, yeah. <laughs> And we need to agree to those yeah. terms. Yeah. So let's create an account. Now, presumably, this bit takes a, a few moments because it's actually doing quite a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's uh, duplicating the whole template site. Yeah. So uh, try to keep your template sites minimal, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here is the payment integration screen. Uh, you can on the settings page, uh, change this copy and this copy as well. We only have one gateway here, which uh, I clicked it. Okay, so there, uh, if you had different options, uh, different buttons would be listed there. So yeah. for PayPal or Stripe, for example. Um, so yeah, here we are. This is your user's dashboard. It goes directly to the account page that it's a special page that WP Ultimo adds here. As you can see, it displays the current plan. Uh, we have a coupon code of 5% for two cycles. Ah, there it is, yeah, yeah. And it's already applied. As you can see, as we, we, we chose the, the manual gateway, it created a pending payment here. And if you click here, there, there are the strict, the instructions to pay, yeah. and the price here is already with the five percent off. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here is a site list of all the sites. This plan allows for multiple sites, so the user is able to add new ones. And there's also the custom domain here. But yeah. So now we have a subscription to look for. If we switch back to... Uh, so now we're going back to the network admin, in other words, yes. the, 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 the account that controls all of this. There it is. So here's our, our first user. He's paying $19.99 with the coupon code. Uh, his subscription expired two minutes ago because we want him to pay right away. Uh, he chose the monthly. And he's on hold because he's, we are waiting to receive his payment. So let's see the details. So here's the subscription management page. There's a lot of options going on here. Man alive, there is. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so we have a quick view of the user here. If the user had a Gravatar, it would appear here. We can go to his template, to his profile page. Uh, we can mark his subscription as free forever. We can change the subscription price and change the billing, the, the period. 
Uh, we also have a site list here and other op options here. We can go directly to the dashboard from here. We can change the plan. We can add trial days. We can change the create the created app date and we can change the active until date. This is the mm -hmm. important date because this is what defines if the subscription is active or not. Mm -hmm. So if you see here up top, we have a clock of the server time and uh, you can see that the active until is in the past right now. So the subscription is not active, but since we have a pending payment, it is marked as on hold. Okay. So let's suppose the client went to the bank and made a deposit and sent the receipt to us and everything checks out. So we can just mark this pending payment as paid. So let's do that. Loading, mark as paid, is now paid. And if we check here, the subscription is now active. And we have a new active until uh, period, which is October. So one month from now. And we have a gear saying that he has four weeks remaining as well. Yep. Uh, if we switch here, the user will see the same thing. His payment now is marked as completed. And yep. So, and the new active until page is here. Okay. So if we go to the dashboard, there's a few interesting things there. Uh, in addition to the default WordPress uh, widgets, WP Wichmo adds a few of them. We display to the user which plan he's in, uh, the space he's, uh, he has used, and the number of users. And here's all the limits. So for example, his plan only allows him to create one site. So that's already filled up. There is no visits yet and there's no updates and just one page and one post. And just so you guys know, if you go to posts, here we are, hello WP builds. So that's a post that was in the template and mm -hmm. we copied it, we copied it over to here. So, okay, yeah, if you guys look up here, uh, his site, as I'm using subdirectory, lives on wpbuilds.local uh, slash test, but his plan allows for custom domain. Uh, this is the big one. <laughs> this is the I, hard bit. <laughs> <laughs> I went ahead and configured a, a local custom domain here, so let's map a domain. And the domain is very creative. Clientdomain.com. <laughs> uh, are you sure? And there's a warning here saying that if the DNS is not properly configured, he can basically take his entire site offline. And yep. you can customize that message, of course. So let's click OK. And yep, we have a custom domain. So if we go to visit site, ooh, mm, it didn't work. Why is Maybe that? just type it in. Is it your host file? Have you just changed it in your? Yeah. Try just typing it in, see if it redirects. Oh uh, yeah. It's that just be some, I mean, is that, is that some sort of Mac thing, I wonder? I'm not um, sure. No, I don't know. But it worked. <laughs> it does actually work, but it's, it doesn't it's, appear in the URL at this point. Yeah, that, that's that's strange. In the, in the real world, it works. Take my word for it. <laughs> oh, it does. It absolutely does. Yeah. So with that, we can move on to the to the last uh, settings page that we skipped on purpose which is the domain map and SSL settings. Um, so here, of course, you can enable or not domain mapping. And if you <laughs> disable all the options or 
basically gone. Uh, you can enable custom domains. So you can enable domain mapping, but not custom domains. And what that does is that you will be able to add mappings as a super admin, but your client won't see this box over here. So only you as a super admin would be able to, to map domains if you disable the enable custom domain domains options. Um, so we have a few options for the admin access. You can either allow your um, clients to access the WP admin via the custom domain or the, your network domain, or you can force that access to use the mapped domain or the network domain. I recommend that you use both because if you force, for example, the map domain and the user messes up the DNS configuration, he will not be able to access the admin. Mm, uh, good point. Yeah. Uh, and here we have some options to force HTTPS. So uh, you can see here that we have a, a table here displaying how how our forcing HTTPS is configured right now. And it's all running on HTTP, but you can change that by forcing HTTPS for the admin panel, for example. If you have a wildcard certificate, you can force HTTPS for subdomains. If you have uh, some, some integration that fetches certificates for map domains as well. You can tick this box to force HTTPS to, uh, for custom domains as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if we click save, for example, and reach for the table again. Mm, ah, okay, so now- Yes, the, because yeah. it's now on HTTPS, it's booted you out as- That makes sense. As is good and proper. <laughs> okay, so you now you can see that we have all selected here. Yep. Um, we have this option uh, for you can uh, allow page on mapping. So this is useful. This is not so useful anymore because Google is officially basically mm -hmm. blocking all pages that run on HTTP only. But in the past, you could have uh, a site running on a map domain that it, that does not have a certificate. So the map domain would run on HTTP, but, but the user has a checkout page that needs SSL. So he would unmap that particular page on his dashboard. And if, when he do that, the the checkout page will no longer use the the map domain but the network domain that has SSL. So, for example, Stripe requires SSL. So it's, it was a handy fish, a feature in the past. I'm not sure if if it's that important anymore. Mm -hmm. And of course, over over here you can set your network IP address. This appears here. So your clients know where to yep. point their domains. And we have the enable single sign-on option. This is tricky and sometimes it doesn't work for absolute, absolutely, absolute, absolutely no reason at all. Sometimes it simply doesn't work. But is uh, but as you guys may know, cookies are domain domain bound. So yeah. if you have a a map domain and your user is logged in on your network domain, if he goes to access the map domain, he will not be logged in. This tries to do some trickery with AJAX and things like that to. Uh, logging the user on the custom domain as well. Okay. So he doesn't need to log in again just because he's switching domains. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Yeah. So the the problem with domain mapping is that 
if you have a VPS that you control for yourself and you have total control over the server configuration, you can easily allow your network to receive all income calls from all different domains and have those domains reach your network. But if you're, for example, using a shared IP or you're using something like WP Engine that has total control over the server configuration, uh, domain mapping will not work by default because when that domain reached that IP, uh, the hosting provider doesn't know where to forward that call mm. to. It doesn't know that that domain uh, is owned by your network. So mm. uh, the solution, unfortunately, is to go by hand and implement integrations with different hosting providers. So if you are using, for example, WP Engine, uh, WP Ultimo will take care of that for you automatically. You, uh, however, it does not support uh, auto SSL, so you might have some problems with uh, map domains being marked as uh, unsecure. Uh, if you go for another hosting provider that is called closed.com, uh, WP Ultimo also handles all by itself. You don't need to add any extra configuration, change any files at all. It just works. But in the case of closed, they offer uh, an auto SSL functionality. So as soon as a your client maps a domain, closed goes to Let's Encrypt and gets a certificate for it. So the custom domain will be covered uh, by SSL automatically, right out, out of the box with zero configuration, which is absolutely fantastic. I can confirm this works because I have it working on Clost or however you say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have support for Cloudways. Uh, they do not offer auto SSL, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, but it does require custom configuration. And we offer knowledge pages for all of this. It's just a few lines that you have to add to your uh, WP config file. Something like this. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, it's fine. Like four lines of yep. stuff. <laughs> and it's the same for cPanel. cPanel, actually, depending on the host provider, they offer an auto SSL uh, functionality. So it should work out of the box uh, for the whole getting a certificate for map domains as well. But you do have to add some lines to the WP config. Uh, Hunt Cloud, we offer support, but there's no auto SSL. In Server Pilot, we offer support, and they also offer auto SSL. So those are the hosting providers we integrate right now. Mm. Of course, if you, if you run, as I said before, if you run your, your own VPS and you know how to configure Nginx or Apache, uh, this is this is not going to be a problem for you. You can open your your server to accept all the domain calls. Mm. But if you are using uh, managed solutions like WP Engine and and so on, you need integrations. And as far if I'm not mistaken, WP Ultimo is the only solution on the market that offers that much that many integrations. Mm -hmm. I would think so. Yep. So, yes, I think that's it. I think you've nailed it, Arindo. That was without doubt the most informative webinar that I've sat through in ages. That was oh, absolutely a lot brilliant. To cover. No, no, no. <laughs> but a lot to cover. But also, you know, uh, it's out there now. Um, those people who uh, have sat through it all, there's quite a few of you. Thank you. That was uh, an hour and 40 minutes. But you got Sorry, the yes. full, no, no, you got the full Monty, as we say in England. You got the the soup to nuts version, every single setting explained, every single dialogue box opened, and so on and so forth. So that's brilliant. And this, it will be going, I'll put it on YouTube and, um, and in the Facebook group, so it's there for posterity. Obviously, awesome. over time, it's 
going to change a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, you've probably gained an understanding now of just how unbelievably clever this thing is um, and how fully featured it is. And dare I say it, how beautiful it is. I think the, the front end stuff that you're showing to the clients looks really attractive. I should probably put my, um, my I'm just thinking I'll probably put my webcam on. Um, and the see about their billing and the billing hello. cycle and all the graphs and hello, hello. Um, yeah, it's, it's utterly okay. beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Ah, and there's the, did, did, what happened there? Did that come up? Did you pop that up? Um, yeah, really, really amazing. So Arindo has this on a lifetime deal at the moment. Um, currently, you're going to be paying 69 bucks for that. But there is a coupon code, which somewhat foolishly, I didn't <laughs> include in this little pop-up box. <laughs> But if you click that button, and the, the link for that, in case you forget, is um, it's links.wpbuilds.com forward slash WP Ultimo. It's in the chat. Uh, so links.wpbuilds.com forward slash WP Ultimo. There's no spaces, no hyphens anywhere. Um, you're going to get yourself 30% off, and that code will last for seven days. So that will be the 27th of September in the year of 2018 that that runs out. Um, if you guys have got any questions, please do them now because otherwise <laughs> we're going to say thank you and bye bye. But uh, Mark says, Cheers, Nathan Arindo. Sure, need to check this out as I'm quite new to everything WordPress, and so some of this went over my head. Well, what I would say, Mark, is um, yeah, it's going to be there for posterity. Watch it again when you've had a bit more of a play. Thank you to both of you. Your plugin is fantastic, says Dawn. Um, um, Thank I'm you. In complete agreement, Dawn. Absolutely. Anybody else? We'll give you thirty seconds if you want to post. Oh, somebody. <laughs> you know how it goes. Um, is there a question there? I can't see. Oh yeah, new. I'm still learning this platform. Could I ask? Says Sophie. Could I ask if Arindo could add the template switcher per user to the list? So the question that she asked earlier, she's saying, mm. could you? Would you be able to add that as a roadmap suggestion? Okay, so here's what I'll do. I'll add here on the card as a feature suggestion. Be sure to go there and give a thumbs up because that's how I know that a feature is needed by multiple people and, okay. and that way I know what to prioritize. Yeah. Does that make yep. sense? That's perfect. Perfect sense. So that's a, um, tr probably the best thing to do would be to Google Trello and then WP Ultimo roadmap. And uh, I'm sure Google will be, will be your best friend. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, she, Sophie says she'll do that. Um, that's why these webinars are good. You get to talk to the person who actually can make this happen as opposed to sitting in a, you know, in an email queue. It's great. So nobody else is adding anything, in which case, first thing I'm going to do is stop recording which I think I've now done. And I'm 